we're going to talk about photosynthesis today and how you can teach it in your classroom. And uh, we're going to go over a couple different examples. Next slide, please. And again, star six to please mute your phones. All right, so first things first, what we're going to do, we've got a nice plant here, okay? And then, so we know plants uh, photosynthesize, so what we're just going to ask the kids to do is just get real close to the plant and take a deep breath and ask them if they can breathe the oxygen. Just kidding, this is a joke. Um, we're not actually going to do that. I just figured start everybody off with a little bit of photosynthesis humor. Okay, all seriousness, uh, we're going to go through um, a very brief background on photosynthesis today and a little bit of lab safety. And then uh, we're going to go over three different types of lab procedures that you can use in your classroom uh, to demonstrate photosynthesis for your students. Next slide, please. Uh, so what is photosynthesis? Um, I mean, photosynthesis is the process used by autotrophs, uh, mainly plants, to convert uh, light energy uh, generally from the sun into chemical energy in the form of glucose. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, general laboratory safety. Uh, it's really important to wear your um, personal protective equipment or PPE. As you can see, I am wearing a lab coat. Um, I've got my safety uh, glasses on. You could also use safety goggles. And I'm going to go ahead and put on um, some gloves. Okay, so now that I have all my personal protective gear on, um, we're ready to go. Um, we're not really going to use anything super dangerous today. We're going to be using um, a little bit of hydrochloric acid, very, very low concentration, and a little bit of indicator. Um, but the indicator, you know, it's a, it will stain clothes, so we don't want students to get uh, either of those materials on themselves. So again, personal protective equipment, uh, lab coat, gloves, goggles are important. Uh, if you don't have enough lab coats, um, aprons will work, so you can at least protect the student's clothing. Next slide, please. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna demonstrate uh, photosynthesis using a color change. So how we're gonna do that today is we're gonna need um, all of these materials here. So we're gonna need four tubes with caps. And if we could uh, switch cameras real quick. So this is what I'm using today. It's just a glass vial with a screw top cap. Uh, any sort of container, any sort of uh, test tube with a lid will work just fine. Uh, we're going to need some uh, Elodea, an aquatic plant, or um, a similar species. And the reason I say that is because um, Elodea, uh, Densa specifically, is um, banned and restricted in certain states. Um, so we do have a couple different plants that we can use, and I'm going to show you um, a couple different examples today. But first, we're going to start with the Elodea. So we can see right here, um, LED is you know, your typical aquatic plant. Most people have seen these before. Most people have this in their classroom. Uh, it's got really, really broad leaves, uh, really good for demonstrating photosynthesis. Uh, we also have um, a cousin of LED. This one is not restricted in any states. This is um, called Egeria Nahas. It's a very, very similar species. Um, you can see the leaves are a little bit smaller and they don't have quite as much surface area, but this will work for your photosynthesis experiments as well. Other things we're going to need. We're going to need our indicator solution. This is going to be the uh, bromothymal blue, 0.01%. Uh, we're going to need um, a little bit of hydrochloric acid, but I'm actually going to show you a trick. So if you don't have hydrochloric acid around your lab or you don't want your students using it, uh, we can actually have a little bit of a trick. We can bypass this part. Uh, we're also going to need some um, a light source and then some aged tap water. And then uh, aluminum foil is going to be optional. Uh, next slide, please. And if we could switch back to the main camera. So we're going to label some of our vials. And we just need uh, four vials for this experiment. Um, I chose the labeling because we're going to be putting different vials under different light conditions, uh, darkness and light. But as long as you have them all labeled individually, um, it doesn't matter as long as you know what is in each vial. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is then we're going to take each vial and we're going to fill it about two thirds of the way um, with water. And this is just your aged tap water. And this doesn't have to be exact, just about two thirds full. Oh, 
All right, so now that we have our vials or test tubes full two thirds of the way with water, we're gonna add um, a little bit of our indicator solution. And if we could uh, switch cameras, please, while I do this. All right, so we're gonna add just one drop of indicator So one drop is really all you need. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a second drop just because it's a little bit harder to see on the camera, but you don't have to do this in your classroom. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so now that we have our um, indicator, what we wanna do is we wanna give it a, a quick swirl just to make sure it's uniform. And you can see there's kind of a faint blue color to the solution. And the next thing we want to do is we want to actually um, acidify the solution. And there's two ways we can do this. Uh, the first way is we're actually going to take um, a little bit of 1% uh, hydrochloric acid. And we're going to add this to uh, each one of our vials. Okay, so this is a little bit harder to see, so I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more indicator. Sure. All right. So you can see now um, that these vials actually have a, uh, here, I'll move these real quick. We actually have like a little bit of a yellowish hue now. So I hope everybody can see the, the yellowish hue. So these went from blue to yellow. So when we add the hydrochloric acid and the bromothymol blue, the indicator, these are gonna turn yellow and this means that the solution is now acidic. Now if you don't want your um, students to use um, any sort of uh, hydrochloric acid, there is another trick you can do. Uh, you can actually take your solution and you can actually um, blow bubbles into it with a straw and what this will actually do is this will um, make the solution uh, you're going to be putting um, co2 in and then this is actually going to create carbonic acid which will then also turn your um, your solution that yellow color okay so now that we have all of our solutions uh, acidified and ready to go, we're gonna cut some of our uh, aquatic plants. So I am going to be using the uh, Elodea Densa, but again, if that is restricted in your state, um, we have uh, other substitutes available. So you don't need a whole lot. Um, we're just gonna take our sprig. We're gonna cut it to about inch and a half, inch and a half pieces. Okay, so we're just gonna take um, each of our sprigs and we're gonna put one sprig into um, our containers labeled uh, L1. And I, I labeled this one D1, but uh, I wrote a D3 in the presentation. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our four samples. We have our L1 and L2. The L2 does not have any um, aquatic plant in it. So that's gonna be um, one of our controls. And then we're going to take our D1 and our D2, or D3 and D4 as I labeled it in the presentation. Um, and we're gonna, uh, these are gonna be actually um, another variable and then another control. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take the two um, labeled L1 and L2, and we're gonna place them under a light source. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take are labeled uh, D1 and D2, and we're actually going to place these in total darkness. And what we're really testing here is um, we wanna show photosynthesis occurring. So what's gonna happen 
is the solutions are going to go um, from yellow to back to blue um, as um, as we uh, as the plant gets to uh, photosynthesize. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? All right. So you really want to um, create like a little table for your. Um, can we switch back to the other camera too? Thank you. So you want to create a table um, with each of our variables, and you want to record the color um, when you start. So in this particular, or so for this case, um, they all start off as yellow. And then we have the L1 and the L2. So one, once again, L1 is with the plant. And then L2 is without. And we want to place those in the light. And then we want to place the other two um, in the darkness. And this is the part um, where it gets kind of variable. If you use uh, LED Adensa, it takes about half an hour um, for there to be enough photosynthesis before we can see any results. Other plants take a different amount of time. And this can be really great for the classroom, depending on what you use and what you, how much time you have. Uh, you can actually use different species and you can like test that and you can have kids write different hypotheses about um, how different plants might affect photosynthesis. So um, I'm going to fast track it. I actually uh, prepared some of these ahead of time, and I'm going to go ahead and show everyone uh, the color changes. So if we could go back to the side camera, please. All right, so this, uh, again, is about um, after half an hour. So this is our L1 with plant and then also in light. And you can see now we have a very, very um, vibrant blue color. So this actually shows that the plant used up the CO2, used up that carbonic acid and underwent photosynthesis. So it actually um, took some of that carbonic acid out of the water and therefore the solution is a little bit more basic again. Whereas um, the one without the plant, also in the light, still yellow. So no photosynthesis occurred and now we have um, just still a yellow color. And then we also have Uh, the same, same thing, we have the plant that was in the darkness. So again, we have that yellow color, no blue. And this plant did not undergo photosynthesis because there was no light. And again, just another control for the uh, in the dark without a plant at all. And then I also repeated this uh, for our other species, the Ageria Nahas. Um, so again, we can see darkness, yellow, no photosynthesis, and then light with the Nahas, we have photosynthesis and the solution turned blue. Next slide, please. Hey, Bobby, while we were taking a break real sure. quick, why does water have to be aged for this? Uh, you don't want chlorine in the water. Yeah, so the question was, uh, why does the water have to be aged? You, know, you don't want to have chlorine um, in any of these experiments. So if you look again, um, this is our little table of our results. So now we have our uh, final colors. And you'll see that, again, the L1 in the light with the aquatic plant, the Elodea, uh, it turned blue. So this shows that uh, photosynthesis did occur, and we did produce some oxygen. So it's a really uh, easy way to demonstrate photosynthesis by color in your classroom. Are there any other questions at this time? I'm going to unmute everyone briefly. More right now, Bobby. Okay, we got a couple from the chat room. I'm going to get to those first. Uh, you don't have to acidify before adding the plant. Um, it doesn't uh, matter which way you do it, as long as it is acidified and then you put the plant in. Okay. Can you please um, tell us the name of the substitute for the Elodea? Sure. So the other substitute I used was um, Egeria Nahas. Could you spell the first part of that name? Um, so at the end of this, um, I have everything listed out, and it's in the webinar. So I'm um, more than happy to send you a copy of that. All right. So. Um, just a couple of tips, and I kind of already went through this, but depending on how much time you have, if you only have like half an hour or 45 minutes with your students, um, it's probably a good idea to set some of these up ahead of time. You saw that I set some of them up ahead of time and the color was fine. So this way the students can set everything up, set it up where they're supposed to in the light and in the dark. And if there's not enough time for the plants to photosynthesize and for you to see that color change, um, this way you could still show them what the end results are gonna be like. Also, if you have multiple lab sections um, within one day, you, know, you can set up one, um, one set ahead of time and then your first class can run through the experiment you show them the results that you did that you got before and then you can use your students the first group of students results for the second and then the second for the third and so on and so forth um, that way everybody can see uh, the end result of the photosynthesis if you have more time than that if you have an hour hour and a half you should be able to do this whole thing with a majority of the aquatic plant species um, no problem at all next slide please 
Okay, so um, we're gonna now do um, photosynthesis by what's kind of called the uh, spinach disc method. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier, um, uh, but we're gonna go through it. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please send them through to the chat and I'll be, uh, do my best to answer them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to prepare um, a sodium bicarbonate solution. And this is gonna be uh, 2%. So you do this by dissolving uh, two grams of sodium bicarbonate in 100 mils of water. Um, I've actually gone ahead and already prepared this solution so you don't have to watch me uh, measuring out chemicals. Uh, we're gonna need some baby spinach leaves. We're gonna need uh, dish soap, uh, a small cup or beaker, uh, a hand hole puncher, just a regular old hand hole puncher. And then we're gonna need um, a plastic syringe. Next slide, please. So um, you really have to soak the spinach leaves um, under a light source uh, the night before just to make sure they're uh, photosynthetically active. Um, if spinach, you know, you store them in the fridge, you store them in the dark, um, they might not be active. So it's good to store them in water under light for one day. Uh, you don't wanna store them for more than that though because then they'll start to break down and deteriorate. I have a couple more questions sure. that came on in. Sure. Um, could you let the vials go longer overnight to say, to check it uh, the next day? Would that make a big difference? Um, so no, the question was from the chat room um, for the previous experiment, if you let the vials go overnight, is that gonna be a problem? Uh, nope, it should stay the same as long as you have it sealed tightly. Uh, overnight should be fine. Uh, you'll still see the color change. It'll still be there the next day. Uh, just make sure that you keep the one, the tubes or the vials that are in the darkness uh, in the dark. And I actually forgot to mention this, so this is a good time before I move on too far. Um, if you don't necessarily have like a pure dark place, you can wrap the vials in, uh, that are supposed to be in the dark in tin foil to make sure that there's no light that goes through. Again, that's optional, but that's just a really good way to make sure there's no light getting in at all. Any more questions? No, just a suggestion that the baby spinach always wilts and that they've used tender ivy plants. Okay, so if you, if you have uh, different problems with spinach, uh, there are other plants that you can use. I guess this uh, tender ivy, not familiar with that, but uh, good tip, thank you for that. Okay, moving along. Uh, so we have our 2% sodium bicarbonate solution. And now what we need to do is we need to prepare um, a uh, dilute soap solution. So this, um, we just add 1.5 mils into 250 mils of that sodium bicarbonate solution. And I've already, again, uh, gone ahead and done this. So I have my sodium bicarbonate solution with um, my soap added. This regular dish soap will work just fine. Uh, all we're looking to do is we're just um, looking to uh, help uh, the spinach discs um, absorb the sodium bicarbonate and you really need to get past the uh, waxy, waxy outer layer. Um, and that just, uh, that's what the soap is doing in this experiment. Next slide, please. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take our hole punch and we're actually gonna um, cut or uh, punch out some discs for the spinach leaves. So if we could switch to the uh, side camera, please. Now, um, when you select a spinach leaf, um, it might sound a little silly, but you really wanna select like a healthy leaf without any um, deterioration. So if you have a leaf like this one, you can see that this one's kind of broken down. It's a little slimy. Uh, this one's dying, so you don't want to use a leaf like this. You want to use a nice, fresh leaf that um, hasn't broken down at all. Uh, also, when you're punching out the holes, uh, you want to avoid any of the veins. Uh, you really want to just try and get as much of the green leafy part as possible. Oh, and also, you want to avoid the edges because you don't want to um, get incomplete discs. So in the directions I say to um, punch out uh, 20 discs, uh, we wanna do 20 because we wanna punch out um, 10 for our experimental value, our experimental variable, which is gonna be in that uh, sodium bicarbonate with soap solution. And then we're also gonna do a control with just water. Um, I've already gone ahead and punched out some of these discs uh, ahead of time. So I'm gonna go ahead now that everybody's seen me do a couple and go use the ones that I already punched out. Okay, so we have our uh, leaf discs here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, take our syringe. And this is just a, a plastic syringe. Um, you really, you just want to uh, unplug the plunger. And now we're gonna um, use some forceps and we're actually gonna just put our spinach discs inside of the plunger. All right, so 
Got almost all of them in there. There's a couple more. Okay. So now that we got our discs into the syringe, can everybody see that? Get the discs in the syringe. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, actually draw, uh, excuse me, first, we're, before we draw any liquid, we're actually going to put the plunger back in. And we're actually going to um, expel as much of the air as we can without damaging any of those discs. So that's pretty good right there. So right up at the tip. So this is just, uh, this is just a dish for me to help draw the solution. So again, this is the 2% uh, sodium bicarbonate with the dish soap added. Now, did you use all 20? No. So um, I guess I should mention this. Um, for the sake of time, um, we're just going to uh, do, the, we'll do one example. We're just going to do the experimental variable with the soap solution. Um, I'm not going to do a control, and we're actually not going to spend the time to time everything out. Um, but again, it's, if you're doing this experimentally in the classroom, you want to use 10 discs for your um, experimental and 10 discs for your control. Um, you really want to just keep it consistent. You want to have the same number of discs in the experimental versus the control. Okay, so now I'm going to draw um, some of my liquid and I'm going to um, draw until about the barrel's about half full. A little bit more. Okay. So everybody can see now that uh, the barrel is about half full, and um, you can see that all the spinach discs are kind of floating. So this is uh, the top here. So they're all floating towards the top. Um, we don't want that. We want all of them to sink. So this is um, kind of the trickiest part, I think, um, and it does take a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to force the remaining air out without spilling our solution everywhere. A little bit's okay. While you're working on that, shouldn't the control have soapy solution and not this water? Uh, so the soapy solution is the variable that we're testing. So the 2% sodium bicarbonate with the soap is the variable. I suppose you could test one with just soap and then one with sodium bicarbonate, um, and then you could test all four. Okay, so now, um, now that the barrel uh, has, ex we've expelled all of the remaining Oxygen. Now what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna try and create a vacuum. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. Sorry, my hands are a little bit soapy. So you actually wanna um, plug the top of the syringe and you actually wanna draw the plunger back. And you wanna hold it for about 10 seconds. And then you can let it go. You can let your thumb off. And what we're looking for is we're looking for all these spinach discs to sink. And that hasn't happened yet, so we're going to do this a couple more times until all of our discs sink. So again, plug the top and then pull the plunger back with the hole plugged, creating a vacuum. And this is really just taking all the air out of the discs. Okay. So you can see we're starting to get some of them to fall. There we go. So some of them are starting to fall down towards the bottom. We still have a couple floating, so we're just going to do this a couple more times. And I've never done this before, but I guess if you're super strong, you don't want to pull the plunger completely out. That'd be pretty hard to do, but just make sure you don't pull it all the way out. All right. Still got some floaters. And again, this is kind of the part that takes a little bit of patience. Sometimes this is the, the trickiest part, is just to get all of that air out of there. Going to give it one more time, and then we're just going to go ahead and move forward. All right, so again, this could take some time. Um, for the sake of time and during this webinar presentation, um, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. But what you can do now is you can actually uh, take the plunger out of the back. Chris, could you uh, go forward, please? All right, so now you're gonna remove the um, plunger from the syringe. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take 
um, just like a small cup and you want to fill it um, about three centimeters full with water or so it's like three centimeters off the table and you just want this distance to be consistent between um, your experimental and your controls and then what you're looking to do is you're actually looking to um, put you want all the spinach discs And again, these all, we want all these to sync, so it's really important to do the, to make sure they all sync ahead of time. And then you're going to um, start a timer, and then every 30 seconds, what you're going to do is you're going to, um, every 30 seconds, you're going to count how many of these discs raise to the top of the uh, three centimeters of water in this cup. So really what's happening is um, the spinach disc leaves oh and i forgot this is another very good point so i don't have um you didn't see a light source on the table just because i don't have enough room but you have to put this under a light source uh so you really need to put a light source on this like immediately and then once you do that then um, the spinach discs are going to be able to photosynthesize and they're going to start producing oxygen again so as they start to produce oxygen they're going to um, float and then you time it and that'll give you a number of discs that float per unit time so if we could uh Move ahead to the next slide, please. Uh, again, just uh, record every 30 seconds um, the when the spinach leaves start floating. And there's just a better picture. You can see this one's kind of in transition. Um, this picture, we have uh, some of the discs are already starting to float. Next slide, please. All right. And um, uh, you, this is where we're just going to create a little bit of a table to um, record our data. Again, um, since I am not doing a control right now just for the sake of time uh, we don't have a, a control um, but what you should see is the discs that are floating in the sodium bicarbonate every 30 seconds eventually you should start seeing more and more and more of these discs floating next slide please okay so we're going to go through um, a third example and this is going to be photosynthesis um, by uh, water dis by the dis displacement of water um, my hands are a little soapy so i'm going to go ahead and uh, change my gloves real quick but for this one, um, we're going to need uh, a beaker, a glass or plastic funnel, a small test tube, um, again, some Elodea or similar aquatic plant species, and uh, some sodium bicarbonate. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to take our aquatic plant and we're just going to cut it into um, some small, small pieces. Uh, for this right now, um, it doesn't matter how many you cut because this is uh, just going to be qualitative. Okay, so we've got our um, LED cut, and what we're actually going to do um, is we're going to assemble. Oops, wrong one. It's kind of a goofy looking apparatus, but we're going to take um, our beaker. So this has uh, just again aged tap water to remove any of the chlorine, and then uh, this also has the um, uh, the uh, uh, sodium bicarbonate in here again just a little bit um, for a carbon source and can we switch cameras back please to the side camera thank you and bring the powerpoint to the front all right so all right so what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, take a test tube a small test tube and we're going to fill this with water fills all the way to the top of water all right so now the test tube full of water you can see that and what we're going to do is we're going to um, take our elodea and we're going to put it under our funnel and we're going to submerge that so we got out And then, so you can see that the Elodea is now under the funnel. There's a couple straggler leaf. That's okay. We don't need those. And then what we're going to do is we're going to quickly invert our test tube over the top of the funnel. You can tilt it a little bit. All right. So now we have our Elodea and our test tube. Uh, so we have our Elodea under the funnel in a beaker with a test tube over it. And what this is going to do is as the plant um, photosynthesizes, again, we're going to stick this under a light source. Um, you want to stick it under light for about 24 hours in this case. Uh, this one does take a little bit longer. This one takes overnight. And what you're going to do 
is, or what the plant's going to do rather, is as it photosynthesizes, it's going to again create oxygen, and those oxygen bubbles are going to bubble up and actually displace the water that's in the test tube. And as that happens, um, you can uh, see the increased oxygen in the tip of the test tube. So I actually have one of these that I set up yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that one out for the one I just did so we can see the difference. All right. So here we have um, Elodea, again, under the funnel. This is from yesterday. You can kind of see, see the top there. That's what we're looking for. So this test tube was completely full. And now you can see that there's oxygen in there. So this plant has been photosynthesizing. And that's actually the oxygen that it has produced. And it's to place some of the water. So again, this is just another way to demonstrate um, photosynthesis. And again, um, I, I didn't set up a control for this one, but you want to do the same thing. You want to set one up um, under a light source, and you want to set another up um, without um, a light source just as, as your control. Uh, next slide, please. I'll do a couple of questions. Sure, Thank questions. You, uh, just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. um, could you run the final part of the previous lab in the syringes as opposed to removing the cup? Uh, yes, yeah, so the question was, um, instead of placing the spinach dips, discs, uh, switch cameras please, instead of uh, placing the spinach discs in the cup and watching them uh, rise, you could, they're asking if you could do it um, in the syringe itself. Uh, yes, you can do that, um, as long as the, the distance, so you want the distance of the, the liquid, so the distance of the water, um, to be the same in uh, your uh, experimental variables and your control variables. So that way, um, the time it takes them to travel up is the same, or the distance it takes for them to travel once they photosynthesize and produce oxygen is the same. Um, and that way, uh, the discs have the same amount of time to reach the surface, because if the volume is different, then the distance is going to be a little bit different, and then, you know, at the let's say the 60 second mark, um, if the volumes are off, you know, you might not count a disc if it's in the process of floating versus has already made it to the top. But no, it, again, as long as the volumes are the same, you don't have to transfer them. I think it's easier, um, but that's, that's my opinion. Also, what is the reason to use the soap? So um, uh, the soap actually, um, so a lot of uh, plants, um, including the spinach, has like a little bit of wax, a little bit of waxy cuticle. So it actually just helps uh, make it um, permeable and it just helps uh, the sodium bicarbonate get into the spinach leaf. Helps bypass that waxy layer. And can you still use distilled water instead of aged water? Um, aged tap water and distilled water, I mean, it's about the same or um, even deionized water. I've never done it with distilled or deionized. I, would worry um, I, about the cells potentially bursting. Um, so I still recommend aged tap water. You should be fine, but I'm, I'm not positive. Any other questions from the chat room? Okay. Would it be best to use a plant light as the last light source? Uh, so this is actually a great question. The question is, uh, should you use like a plant light, a grow light as the light source for any of these um, experiments? The answer is yes and no. Um, if you just have one shot at this and you just want to demonstrate photosynthesis, yes, uh, use like a grow light. You could probably pick them up um, like Home Depot Lowe's, something like that. But if you want to do like an inquiry portion, if you have a couple lab days, um, that's actually a great variable to test. You can test different light sources, different colors. You can test different distances to light sources. Um, it's up to you as the teacher um, how far you want to take this. Again, if you're just demonstrating, keep it simple. Um, you know, just a regular grow light. You can use incandescent um, if that's all you have. Uh, but again, it's going to depend on what you want to do. Those could each be different variables. Any more questions? Could you use uh, aquarium dechlorinizers uh, or commercial water dechlorinizers um, used for fish tanks instead of aged water? Uh, as far as removing the chlorine, you could probably use like a commercial dechlorinator um, or like a fish dechlorinator. However, I don't know what the chemical composition of those are, so I'm not sure if that's going to affect anything else. Um, if you do use it, it might be also beneficial to set out some um, aged tap water. I think you're going to be fine. Like if you forget to set the tap water out and you know you have no other time to do this, I would say go for it. But again, I would recommend using aged tap water. Also, uh, how can this be done to obtain quantitative data? We'll get there. So no, I'll talk about a little bit about um, how we can do some quantitative analysis with uh, actually a couple of these different studies. Okay, so um, this is going to kind of be uh, hopefully the, and a little bit of an exciting part. 
Um, what I actually did is I actually set up, um, so going back to the inverted funnel with the water displacement method. So again, uh, oxygen is produced by the plant. Uh, it gets captured up here in the top of this tube. So what I actually did earlier is I had another one of these set up actually over the weekend and I um, had a lot of O2 gas. So what you can actually do is you can um, light a match and quickly blow it out and then drop it into the test tube and it should ignite. Um, now, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up. I think um, I waited just a little bit too long when I did the one for this morning, or when I took it off this morning. So I might have let the oxygen out, but we're going to go ahead and uh, see if I captured any oxygen. If it does have oxygen in this test tube here, again, this is one that I set up over the weekend, um, it should have a quick, a quick little um, ignition. So. Didn't quite get it. There was a little bit of a sizzle. Um, you probably weren't able to see that. Uh, I apologize. But if you do have oxygen in there, uh, you should just see a quick, a quick little uh, puff of flame as the oxygen is consumed. So I don't know if you heard it. I could hear it. I heard a little bit of a pss. Uh, and it wasn't just the match going out in the little bit of residual water. But um, that's just a cool, fun thing. Uh, and if you have lots of kids doing this, um, and like you have lots of different lab groups, you know you have diff more chances to get some of that uh, cop captured O2. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And again, this is just um, this just helps visualize. I know it's kind of hard to see with the um, the side camera. So if you again just want to request a copy of this uh, webinar, here's just a picture. You have your oxygenating plant under the funnel with the test tube, and then your captured oxygen. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So um, again. Uh, for further inquiry on any of these, we can change some of the variables. Uh, you can change your light source. Like I said before, you can change the distance from the light source. Uh, you can also change the different uh, type of plant used. Um, so again, it's, I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of a, you know, a reminder. The Nahas takes a little bit longer. It doesn't have uh, quite as much surface area, which is another thing if you want kids to maybe test reasons why different plants uh, change the rate of photosynthesis. That's a good reason, surface area. Um, so you can definitely change what plants you use. Uh, the more you have, the more different variables you could test. And then I want to just talk um, a little bit, we had a question about uh, how to do this quantitatively. Uh, so really what you can do is we can take um, one of our uh, samples earlier. Um, we'll go ahead and do it this way. So we can take one of our samples from earlier. So you can just take a, a small vial and then we can put um, a piece of our plant in the vial. And for this, if it's quantitative, um, you do want to have the exact same amount. So you probably want to either um, do length or maybe even measure out uh, like grams of the aquatic plant. But you're going to put that into the vial. And now what I have is I actually, um, if we could uh, switch uh, cameras real quick. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a stopper that fits into whatever size container, vial, test tube that you're using. And you need it to have um, a small hole in the top. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take um, a small pipette and we're actually going to insert the stopper into our vial, just like that. And you really need a tight seal. Okay. And then you're going to take uh, the tip of your pipette and you're actually going to put, uh, just dip it in some water. So you can see there's a little bit of water in the bottom of the tip and then you're actually going to insert that directly into the stopper with the hole and you should actually be able to see that little bit of water move up the pipette. Push a little bit more but you can see it move. All right. So you can see, now it's a little bit hard to see in that, in that camera, but right here um, in the pipette, this is actually where the water is. You can kind of see a little bit uh, contrast in color. So this is actually where our water is. So now we can actually record this as our like initial volume. And what we actually do is we'll again place this, um, we'll, we'll pl place this in the light. And as the plant photosynthesizes, what's gonna happen, again, oxygen is gonna be produced and that little um, water, that little bit of water is actually going to move up the pipette. 
Um, and then depending on, again, this is up to the teacher, how much time you have, how much time you wanna um, let the students test this. You can actually get um, like uh, milliliters of oxygen produced over units of time. So that's probably the best way to go ahead and make this uh, quantitative. Uh, and again, it's really only requiring two more uh, pieces of equipment. Um, it's the exact same setup as the first uh, by color, except you don't need the indicator. And then you just put the stopper in with the small pipette. Now, the, the only problem is uh, making sure everything fits, right? You need to have um, enough of the same size stoppers. You need to have um, enough of the same size pipettes to fit, and you need to make sure all the seals are tight. But again, you can really get a good rate on that, and then you can graph it or do whatever you want. And then you can test different variables. You could do different plants. Um, you could do uh, light and dark. Um, distance from light, different types of light, and then all these things, you know, you can see the rate and how different that is. Uh, could we uh, switch back to the uh, main camera, please? And uh, next slide. Um, so all the materials I use today um, are available at uh, wardscience or wardside.com, excuse me. Um, so for those of you teaching um, more advanced level science courses, uh, we do have a couple full kits available. Um, we have a uh, photosynthesis and respiration kit, and that's actually where the, uh, the photosynthesis by color comes from. It's part of that kit. That kit also comes with a respiration study, um, but that uh, comes with all those vials I use today. It comes with all the caps. Um, it comes with uh, the plastic uh, syringe. Or sorry, that's, that's, sorry, it does not come with the plastic syringe. That's a, a different kit. But it comes with everything you need to do the photosynthesis by color. And then we have um, the... Spinach disc experiment is actually one of our um, AP biology labs. So um, that is actually one of our photosynthesis labs, again, for AP biology. And that one comes with um, everything you need to do um, the spinach disc. And that one's the one that comes with uh, the different plungers. And then I just have um, a couple uh, different examples of aquatic plants. I know someone asked about the spelling earlier. Uh, here they are right in the webinar. So you can see uh, we have Elodia densa. We have a bunch of different sizes. Um, what I have up here is just a, it's a 12 pack. It comes with 12 sprigs. Same thing with the Egeria Nahas. Uh, it's actually the same cost currently. Um, so it's just a nice substitute. Um, and we have different sizes of that. We have, uh, I believe, 12 all the way up to 100 packs. And then each, uh, so 12 pack has 12 sprigs, 100 pack has 100 sprigs. And we also offer um, different aquatic plants. Uh, another one we've tested that I didn't demonstrate today is um, Sagittaria. Uh, that also works really well for any of these um, experiments. Uh, all the chemicals are available online. Uh, we have um, you know, lab coats and all the glassware, anything you, anything you might need for this experiment. Uh, the one thing we don't have, though, is the um, displacement method. We don't actually, with the inverted funnel, we actually don't currently have a kit for that. Um, so if you have more questions about that, I mean, I'd be more than happy to take those questions offline. Or if you have an email, um, more than happy to help you through that. Uh, next slide, please. And then this is a, kind of our disclaimer, um, a friendly reminder to please do not release any organisms into the environment. Um, again, there are some specific state restrictions uh, on Elodea densa, which is why we offer um, different alternatives like the Egeria Nahas, but please do not release any organisms, um, any plants, anything into, into the wild. Uh, either dispose of it or keep it indoors um, in an aquarium. And, uh, that's uh, everything I have so far, or everything I have for you all today. Um, I'd be more than happy to take some questions. I'm going to try and unmute again, but we've had a ton of background chatter today, so I apologize if I can't hear. We're going to take them more through um, the, the chat. So I'm going to unmute everyone. To play, all participants are now in interactive talk mode. So if you... Yeah, we just have a ton of background chatter. I apologize. Um, uh, if we have any questions at this time, um, to play, uh, type them through the chat, and then I'll do the best I can to answer them. Oh, yeah, sorry, one more slide. So there's a question. Um, for the displacement method, um, if you could have, let's say, like a, the question was how to quantify that, um, or a suggestion how to quantify that. Um, if you do have, let's say, a, a test tube or maybe a, a graduated cylinder that fits over the funnel, um, then you could use that. You could see uh, where your starting point is, uh, volume, and then the change. You could uh, quantify that as well. Participants in Chicago cannot use LDA at all. Mm -hmm. um, so would the Egeria Nahas be a good substitute? Yes. So the, if you can't get LDA Densa because of a state restriction, uh, we recommend using uh, Egeria Nahas. 
Again, just realize it just takes a, a little bit longer. It doesn't have quite as much surface area. Uh, we do have, I mean, we do have some other aquatic plants. Um, Ageria Nahas um, and then the Sagittaria, which I mentioned, are probably your best substitutions. Um, we also have Elodea canadensis and uh, Ceratophyllum, uh, but both of those have even less surface area, so it's going to take even longer to do the experiments. Could you use a non-aquatic plant to do the color changes? Um, you can't. Ah, hmm. That's a tough one. Um, if you use a non-aquatic plant, um, it's actually that might be a that's actually a great uh, idea for an experiment. A non-aquatic plant. I don't know how fast um, different plants might photosynthesize. If it's within that, let's say, half hour time frame, um, you could see the color change. But I just worry that uh, the plant will die uh, or it'll drown because there's too much water if you use a non-aquatic plant. But again, it kind of depends on how long it takes to photosynthesize. Uh, I think it's a great idea for, um, you know, a different variable to test in the classroom. Also, um, is this uh, a good practice uh, for middle school? Uh, sure. No, any of these, um, the way I presented them, you know, you can kind of take it and do it very, very basic. You could just do one of these. Um, for like an introduction just to show oxygen being produced or you know for more of the complex like we have the AP biology kit which is better for you know like high school juniors and seniors and then again uh, the method that I used with the um, stopper and the pipette could also be used to quantify for a more advanced group but definitely um, I would even say um, the displacement or the color change method I'd say it would be good even down into the elementary level just to demonstrate photosynthesis Maybe, again, maybe you don't do anything quantitative at the younger groups, but you just, uh, you know, show that it occurs, show that oxygen is being produced. Are there any reinforcement or homework resources provided for these labs? Um, there's a lot of student activities. There's a lot of questions uh, in the back of all the labs. I would have to um, go get the literature. Um, if you get the kit, any of these kits that we supply, uh, full literature, we usually have a student and a teacher's edition. Uh, it is going to depend on the kit, but there usually are pre-lab questions, uh, activities, student activities for after the lab is done, further inquiries. Um, could you use vinegar instead of hydrochloric acid? Um, I've never tried vinegar. Uh, I can't remember the pH of vinegar off the top of my head. If you don't have hydrochloric acid, I would recommend um, just doing a color change by uh, blowing bubbles. Here, actually, I can, um, some people probably left, but we can do a little quick demonstration of that. Okay, uh, actually, could you switch it back over, if you don't mind, sorry. Okay, so if you don't have hydrochloric acid, I'm going to show you really quickly what you can do. So I'm going to add um, some more of my indicator. This is just a fresh tube, um, fresh water, just regular um, aged tap water again. I'm going to add an excessive amount of in, uh, indicator. mix it around a little bit so everybody can see that blue color now so now what you're going to do is you're actually going to take um, like a small straw and you can actually blow bubbles into this and if you can see uh, we went from blue to yellow again so just by blowing co2 in uh, you're creating carbonic acid and that can uh, be what um, you use instead of hydrochloric acid to acidify the water. And you can see that was pretty quick. So that would be my recommendation if you don't have the, um, the hydrochloric acid. How quickly does a here in Aha ship to Massachusetts? Uh, so all of our, uh, you can switch back to full camera. So um, everything that comes out of our uh, live materials department uh, ships standard two day. Um, you can pay to have uh, overnight shipping. Um, I'm not sure if Massachusetts specifically is in our ground range. Um, we have, uh, where I am, I'm based out of Rochester, New York. We have another facility in um, San Luis Obispo, uh, California that ship live materials. Um, so with the ground, I'm not sure if that's one or two day, but our default shipping on all live items, so like the Ajiri Nahas is two days. Uh, we do not ship over weekends for the live materials, so it's best to place your orders on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and then expect two days uh, for the shipment to arrive. 
Uh, and um, Nahas does very well just in a regular um, aquarium, just like Elodea Densa does. Um, you can set it up with a grow light. You could just throw it in your fish tank when you're not using it, as long as it uh, doesn't ever get outside. So you can get it ahead of time. I guess that's the point. <laughs> Yeah, does it come with instructions on how to maintain them? Uh, actually, Nahas is a new product. We just started carrying it last year, uh, so we don't actually have any literature up on it yet. Uh, it's a work in progress. If you have any questions about it, um, feel free to uh, email us. So we do have a teacher resources guide online for everything we do have available. Um, it can be found at wardside.com. Uh, we don't have one for uh, the Naha specifically, uh, but it is very similar care and unpacking uh, to Elodie Adensa. So you could use that reference. All right, so it looks like uh, that's all the questions we have. Um, again, thank you for participating in our photosynthesis webinar today. Uh, again, any questions you think of, feel free to contact us. And I wish everyone um, a happy evening and a great summer.